But are they as hopeful, as optimistic as you? Well, they, sometimes young people w would only see what is obvious. What is obvious. But I explained to him, to them, that uh, there are more things to do. And I urge them to study. So we take it that they're not, they do not approve of what no, it's you're not doing? No, it's not that. They did not say that they, they did not approve of it. But uh, they are just curious. And I would interpret that curiosity of uh, being positive. And just curious, uh, where were you during the Jabida massacre? I was here in, uh, that was, I was here in Manila. I see. <coughs> we used to rally in front of uh, Congress mm -hmm. when uh, Senator Mino Akane delivered his privileged speech. Mm -hmm. About Chibi Narula, I was in, in the gallery. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about that yeah. day, sir? What do, what you, do you, remember you remember about that day? It when was in March 18, 18, 1968. So you were, you actually attended the Senate yeah. hearings? And even in the sit in demonstration in Malacanang, mm -hmm. I was there together with Nur Miswari. Oh, yeah. And some of uh, the, the military commanders who trained abroad mm -hmm. were there in, in the Freedom Park. Park. Yes. Freedom Park. I guess in relation to the Jabi, the massacre, have you been to Simonul Island in Tawi Tawi? I, no, no, I have, I have no, not been there, but Bungao. You have been to Bungao. Yeah. Yes. Have you met the members of the Royal Security Forces? Were you able to meet the members of the Royal Security Forces? I happened to meet, uh, not, uh, not a member of the Security Forces, but I happened to meet one uh, person. I, w I, know the, I know the name, but I would not name him. <laughs> okay. In, in Kuala Lumpur. He gave me a calling card, and in that calling card, it says that he is the foreign minister of the Sultanate of Sulu. Okay. So I just keep silent. <laughs> <laughs> but the residents of Tawi Tawi would look at the peace process quite differently, given given the standoff and, and everything. What what are your members telling you about the kind of feedback that they're getting from Tawi Tawi? Uh, we had a meeting, a very big meeting, of our leaders from Tawi Tawi and uh, Sulu about a month ago in Camp, in camp Darapanan or in Darapanan. Uh, it was precisely to, to, to understand the feeling of Emalet uh, members in Sulu. But the general uh, impression that we got from them was that uh, only few people are involved in the so-called Royal Army. Royal Army. Have you had the chance to speak with um, Kiram recently? No, but one of the ears. Mm -hmm. But a member of the Jamal of Hispanic, Abdullah Kamlian, talked to Jamal of Kiram and mm -hmm. Sultan Ismail Kiram. Mm -hmm. The problem with the Sultanate of Sulu is that there are so many claimants. Yes. Yes. There are at least nine claimants. Mm -hmm. so it's very difficult to, to deal with uh, the Sultanate as a group. Because they are divided. So how do we approach this? Well, uh, we believe in dialogue. We reach out, listen to people. Even if, if we, even if we disagree with people, mm -hmm. we do not tell them that they are wrong. We just listen. Then we find you know, some ways to, to tell him indirectly in a, in a very diplomatic way that there is a better way to do things. Mm -hmm. There's a there's one question from Veronica Pedrosa. She says hello, by the way. <laughs> um, what makes MILF think it can achieve peace in Mindanao when every attempt in the past has failed? Well, this formula is different. And the actors are different. Can you specify in terms of the formula? Because our viewers might not be familiar with... I, I know you're referring to the old formula of the MNLF, but can you elaborate on how different yeah, can you explain to those who may not be too familiar First, with the nitty-gritty? Uh, empowerment in the case of this negotiation is for our people. It's not for leaders. Okay. And the last thing that a leader of the Milet would do is really to aspire for something. I was practically forced to accept the chairmanship of the transition commission. I did not like it. 
So that's one basic difference. We want to empower our people, not the MILF, not the leaders. Once the people are empowered, then essentially, or as, as a consequence, leaders would also be empowered. But that is not what we want in life. It's just incidental that we are here, that we are serving our people. I know that you're still um, drafting the rules and regulations of the Transition Commission, but you mentioned that public participation will be at the forefront of your process. Can you give us some ideas on how you intend to go about it? If I am um, a Bang Samora <coughs> and I want to be, I want to participate in the process, how can I do it? Well, there is a framework. The larger, the larger part of the drafting of the basic law is controlled by that framework agreement. But the nitty-gritty is not there. So this nitty-gritty requires consultation of our people. Because we want the people to own the basic law. And once they own the basic law, I think uh, any other group would have difficulty in rejecting what the people have owned. Because it's the product of their own undertaking. See, We want to create a critical mass of support from the people. That's why it's indispensable that uh, as part of the process in drafting the basic law, we need to go to the people, ask them, converse with them, and know what is in their hearts. So you will be going around um, different areas, see yourselves. Essentially, we will go around. Yes. yes. Do you have any, I guess, final words for, um, that you would like to address uh, Filipino Muslims also who might be a bit skeptical about the peace process and the negotiations? Uh, I would like to appeal to, <coughs> to the Bangsamoro people and to all other peoples in Mindanao and in the entire country to support the peace process. This is not only for the Muslims or the Moros, but for the indigenous people, it's for everybody, including the Christians. When we have peace in Mindanao, it would redound to the best interest of everybody, even to the Philippine government especially, even to the, even to the businessmen, because once there is peace, business thrives in a peaceful situation. And then, the, once there is real peace in Mindanao and peace would be established, I think uh, it would be very easy for the Philippine government to emerge as one of the tigers in, at least in Southeast Asia. Because I can imagine the huge expenses by the government in fighting insurgency in, in Mindanao. And you know, the, the, the war in Mindanao between the MILF and the government is unwinnable for both parties. We cannot win the war by conventional means because the government is strong. But we can always resort to guerrilla warfare, which we know the terrain. <coughs> so it would be unwinnable for both parties. So the better part of judgment is really to finish this process and have peace in Mindanao. I guess that's experience and wisdom <laughs> coming from you. Uh, we'd, we'd like to wrap up our, our discussion today. Um, thank you again to MIL, MILF Peace Panel Chair Mohager Iqbal for being with us and shedding more light on the future of the Framework Agreement on the Bank tomorrow. And thank you too to Glenda and Angela. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good luck.